In my structural engineering made simple series, today I talk about design of lintels. Please take a moment and read the disclaimer at the bottom of this slide before we continue. Lintels are structural elements used above openings in walls to support the weight of the masonry. If the span length is not very long, a single steel angle profile may be used as a lintel. For longer span length, channels, W sections, and even built-up sections may be used. In certain applications, reinforced concrete members with rectangular cross sections, timber, and masonry have also been used as lintels. For design of a lintel, we need to know the applied loads and understand structural analysis and design of beams. The lintel will be considered as a simply supported beam. The loads applied on a lintel include the weight of the masonry supported by the lintel, any load, dead load or live from the floor or roof, and self-weight of the structural member used for the lintel. Depending on the height of the masonry above the lintel, the load from the weight may be either uniform or triangular. Structural idealization of a lintel with possible loads applied on it are shown in the next slide. Generally speaking, if there is enough of masonry height above the beam and the masonry can develop an interlock resisting system, the load from masonry will be triangular. The triangular load means that only a portion of the total masonry weight is applied on the lintel. If the height is not adequate, or we are not sure about the interlock system working between masonry units and the mortar, then it is better to use the entire masonry load on the lintel as a uniform load. This slide shows five different loads on the lintel. Load 1 is a triangular load we talked about. Load 2 is a uniform load from the floor or roof above. It applies at the height of L over 2. Load 3 is any concentrated load applied at the height of L3. Load 4 is a horizontal thrust force F because of the arching action of the uh, masonry. And load do, uh, five is the self weight of the lintel. Please note that L is the span length of the lintel. Let's talk about these loads more in detail. Load one, as highlighted in red in here, is the main load on the lintel. The triangular distribution forms when the height of the masonry above the lintel is at least equal to L over 2 plus 8 to 10 inches. Remember, L is the span length of the lintel. The triangular distribution can only be used when the masonry at the top of the lintel forms an in-plane arching action as we explained before. This happens when there is an interlock, uh, internal resistance between masonry blocks and mortar. If prefabricated masonry blocks are used, the arching action may not be present in this situation and in cases where the masonry height is less than L over 2 plus 8 to 10 inches, we apply the entire weight of the masonry above the lintel as a uniformly distributed load. Load 2 is shown again highlighted in red is a dead load and live load from the floor or roof above. If these loads are applied at a height higher than L over 2 plus 8 to 10 inches, they can be neglected. Load 3, again highlighted in red, is any concentrated load applied at a height of L3 and will transfer to the lintel as a distributed load with a 60 degree angle as shown. Using L3 as a height, at which the load P applies, and with the width of the wall as TE, the distributed force from the load P on the lintel can be obtained by computing the side length of the equal triangle form. 
This load is uniform and is equal to Q3 equal to 0.87P divided by TE by L3. TE is the thickness of the wall, as we mentioned. Load 4 and load 5 are highlighted here. Load 4 is a thrust force F and is developed because of the arching action, which is a result of the masonry forming an arch above the lintel. In most cases, it can be neglected. Load 5 is a sulfate of the lintel as considered as a uniformly distributed load. Structure analysis and design considerations. The structure analysis and design include computing maximum bending moment and shear for factored load to make sure they are within the respective resistances. We also need to check the adequacy of support area to accommodate the resistance capacity of masonry. Finally, we also need to compute the deflection. The deflection is limited to L over 600 or 0 0.3 inches, whichever is the smaller. This is to avoid crack development in the masonry above the lintel. In computing the deflection, the combined superimposed live and dead load must be considered. And if torsion is present, the lintel must also be checked to make sure the rotation is limited to 1 over 16 of an inch. This rotation is considered over one half of the span length of the lintel and is used to compute the limit on the angle of twist. Let's look at an example. An angle is used as a lintel to support a brick masonry facade of 42 pounds per square foot of density. The brick facade above the lintel is built in place and has a height of 7.5 feet. The clear span of the lintel is 8 feet, and depending on the condition, we are assuming that the ends are restrained, and that could be done through bolts. We want to design an appropriate 836 steel angle for this lintel. There are no superimposed loads on the lintel. Since the masonry is built in place, the in-plane arching action is formed and as such a triangular load can be used as we explained earlier. The lintel is a simply supported beam with a triangular load of Q at its peak. Now here we show the triangular load. The intensity at the peak is Q which is L1 multiplied by the density of the masonry. Please notice that at the ends, we have a bearing area A times B. Look at the lower figure. B is the width of the outstanding leg of the angle, the horizontal leg of the angle. And A is the width of the support. The bending moment is Q, L squared over 12. Q is a uniform uh, load, a triangular load actually in this case. And V, which is the same as reaction, is QL over 4. The deflection is QL4 divided by 120 EI when E is the modulus of elasticity and I is the moment of inertia of the cross section. And FA is a compressive stress on masonry, which is the reaction divided by the bearing area A times B. For the strength computation, the provisions of the American Institute of Steel Construction, AISC, are used with the lintel considered restrained laterally at the ends only, as we explained before. In this example, we use L1, which is the height of the triangle, as L over 2 plus 8 inches, which would be 56 inches, or 4.67 feet. Therefore, at the peak, the intensity of the load would be 4.67 times 42. Remember, 42 is the density of the wall. The answer is 196 pounds per foot. And remember that this is a service load, in other words, without any load factor. Because we are using the LRFD approach, we need to multiply this Q by a load factor. 
and the only load we have here is a dead load therefore the load factor is 1.4 the answer is qu equal to 1.4 times 196 which is 274.6 this is called the factored load therefore the applied factored bending moment is now computed as you can see mu is equal to 1.465 foot kips the reaction and shear factored is 549 pounds the reference we use here is AIAC 2017 15th edition let's start the design by selecting an angle let's use an angle 5 by 5 by 5 sixteenths of an inch in thickness Per AISC, the member must be at least laterally restrained at both ends, and this can be provided by securing each end to masonry through bolts. The vertical leg of the angle at its upper portion is in compression with the maximum stress at the toe. There are no lateral horizontal loads, and the bending occurs with respect to the XX axis. The section properties of this angle are Sx, which is section modulus as 2.04 inches to the 3. Cross-sectional area is 3.03 square inches. Moment of inertia of the cross-section, 7.44 inches to the 4. The thickness of the angle, 5 sixteenths of an inch. And B, which is the width of the angle, is 5 inches. For computing the nominal resisting moment MN, we need to compute the moment resistance based on the following three modes and pick up the smallest of the three. One, bending resistance based on yielding effect. Two, bending resistance based on lateral torsional effect. And finally, three, bending resistance based on the local buckling effect. So let's start the yielding bending strength, and that is MY equal to SX times FY. FY is the yield capacity of steel, and the corresponding MN is taken as 1.5 times MY, which in this case is 110.2 inch kips. Two, we're going to do the lateral torsional effect. Per AISC, for a single angle under bending about a geometric axis with no lateral torsional restraints, the lateral torsional strength is obtained from the following equation. First, we want to find MY, which is 0.8 FYSX. This MY is different from previous one. For this purpose, we use 80% of previous value. And we also need to compute a moment called M critical, MCR. For that one, the parameter CB per AIC is 1.14, and the equation for MCR is given. While well, plugging the numbers in that equation, we end up with a value equal to MCR 205.5. The ratio of MY to MCR, therefore, is 0 0.286, and because it is less than 1, Therefore, per AISC, the nominal capacity for lateral torsional effect is MN equal to the equation that you see there. Plugging the values in that equation, we ended up with MN equal to 76.1 as highlighted in red. Finally, we need to compute the third MN, and that is based on the local buckling of the leg of the angle. Per AISC, since the toe of the leg is in compression, the slenderness of the leg in compression is lambda equal to B times T. 5 divided by 5 sixteenths of an inch is 16. There are two limits of lambda, lambda P and lambda R, based on AISC. Lambda P is 15.3, lambda R is 25.8 because our lambda for the section is 16, as in between the two, therefore the MN is from the equation that you see there. Plugging the numbers in that equation, we finally get our third value for MN, which is 85.8. As you observe, the second value, which is 
based on the torsional buckling is the smallest. Therefore, our MN for this angle is 76.1 inch cubes. However, we need to apply a resistance reduction factor or sometimes called capacity reduction factor. In this case, phi is 0 0.9 and we have a factor capacity phi MN, which is 5.71 foot cubes. Now we divide the applied bending moment by this resistance, we get what we call the strength utilization, which is 0 0.26. And as long as this value is less than 1, our design is okay for bending. Next, we check the section for shear. We don't expect the shear to be critical. Usually, lintels are designed primarily for bending but nevertheless let's check the shear as well to check the shear per aiac we need to compute a factor called h over tw which in this case is the same as b over t and that's 16 if you remember we compare it with the limiting value which is mentioned in there the parameter kv in that limiting value is 1.2 and you notice that our h over tw is smaller than the limiting value therefore the nominal shear resistance is from the equation that you see in there with the parameter cv2 equal to 1 that gives us a vn equal to 34 kips of course we again need to apply based on lrfd approach a resistance reduction factor which is 0 0.9 also we get the factored resistance at 30.6 and dividing the factored applied shear by this factored resistance we have a strength utilization factor of 0 0.02 which is fairly small therefore it is okay for shear as well finally the deflection in computing the deflection make sure to use pounds and inches consistently our load was 196 if you remember the peak of the load was 196 pounds per foot, so we divided by 12 to have pounds per inch. Everything else is put in inches and pounds, and the final answer is 0 0.05 inches. Certainly, this is less than L over 600 and 0 0.3 inches, so our lintel is also okay for deflection. As a last check, Let's find out what is the bearing pressure on the masonry. That's the compression uh, stress on the masonry. In this case, we are using the capacity of the masonry as 1000 PSI. That's the compressive capacity without a reduction factor. For a direct compression, the capacity reduction factor is 0 0.65. And the factor applied reaction is 549. We know B, B is equal to 5, but we don't know A, so let's take A as an unknown. As you know, in masonry design, we use 85% of a prime sub M as a compressive capacity used in our calculations. Furthermore, that is multiplied by 5, which is 0 0.65. So we set VU divided by A times B equal to this resisting value and solve for A. The minimum A is obtained as 0 0.2 inches. However, in this case, we're going to use 4 inches for A to accommodate the required edge distance for the holes needed for anchor installations. Therefore, our 5 by 5 by 5 sixteenths of an inch angle that we use is okay for this lintel. For longer spans, single angles may not offer an acceptable design. In those situations, the structural members such as a W section will be more appropriate. Also notice that the limit on acceptable deflection is much smaller than what we use in floors. The more rigorous requirement in this case is to avoid crack development in the masonry wall. Thank you for watching this video.